Hey, mushroom friends, it's Anna McHugh. I am out on a beautiful but very dry Saturday morning and I'm looking for mushrooms and I have found but one uh, ephemeral mushroom that is, you know, here today and gone tomorrow, the kind of things that I'm typically really excited to find. Um, but this is Russula flavida. It's a fairly common and very distinctive fungus uh, that grows in our oak and beech groves. Those are my favorite mushroom places, uh, you know, locally. And so uh, I want to talk about how to identify this mushroom when you might find it. It is fairly uh, abundant, like the simple fact that it hasn't rained and there are mushrooms to find, uh, I think is a testament to this particular species commitment to producing fruiting bodies and getting on with the process of dropping spores. I truly do wish that other mushroom species would get with the program as far as that is concerned, but uh, for today I think I might have to settle on uh, this being a single mushroom day, unfortunately. Um, that said, beautiful, so I'm, I'm happy to talk about it. I actually, uh, I like to do mushroom art in my spare time, and I think I'm actually going to uh, do an illustration of this species because it is just so gorgeous. So uh, it is in the Russula genus. That is a fairly distinctive and common uh, genus. You will find hundreds of different species and they're often very difficult to tell apart. So Russulas in general are a uh, brittle fruiting body, cap and stem dealy with white gills. And uh, this species is a little unusual just because the white is a little more on the creamy side, but oftentimes you find a Russula and sort of the like archetypical, you know, Joseph Campbell version of a Russula is a white stem, red cap, very white, brittle gills underneath. And the whole mushroom, uh, if it's fresh, will just break apart like a piece of chalk. Now, once bugs start to get to them, that really distinctive brittleness starts to become a little more difficult because um, russulas, like many other mushrooms, attract bugs. So you'll very frequently find mushrooms that meet that des description, and you're like, I bet it's a russula, and then you go to crush it and see if it falls apart like russulas tend to do, and it will just smush, but the smush is because the mushroom has been eaten out, uh, you know, in the, in the middle especially. So that's begun to happen with this particular specimen, but I think, uh, you know, I, I love to uh, destroy these mushrooms, so at the end of this video I'm going to see exactly how brittle this uh, remains, but I think it's in pretty good shape. So, uh, Russula flavida is a uh, yellowy, orangey mushroom. It's very brightly colored. Um, there are other yellowy Russulas out there that are, um, that I have not seen, but there, you know, are definitely yellowish species that um, are staining. And so they stain like a little bit of a gray color is my understanding. And uh, they're, I don't know how well documented they are in this area, but as far as like you start to look up yellow Russulas almost immediately, you you'll see um, species that are described as uh, sort of popular edible, in particular in the UK, uh, that have a sort of grayish staining when you handle them. Russula flavida doesn't stain at all when you handle it. Additionally, those yellowish species are sort of a more pale yellow, uh, sort of, you know, like, um, I don't know, like semolina flower yellow, as opposed to this cadmium sort of like really up in your face yellow orange color that we have going on with Russula flavida. So, uh, you know, you find these mushrooms growing with hardwood. They are mycorrhizal, meaning they have a mutualistic relationship with a tree uh, that, you know, the tree provides photosynthetic sugar to the fungus and the fungus provides uh, moisture. And then of course, moisture carries a lot of mineral content, whatever is, you know, resident in the groundwater and delivers that to the tree. So mutually beneficial relationship also as a consequence of this, mycorrhizal mushrooms grow in the same spot year after year. So, um, you know, I'm delighted this particular patch is uh, right along one of my uh, mushroom highways, if you will. And oftentimes I see it fruit, you know, two or three times per year. So this is a pretty abundant fruiter. I haven't actually seen it in these like desperately bad mushroom conditions before, but that also uh, sort of reinforces my notion that this species is pretty determined to produce fruit uh, with a degree of regularity that I wish, again, other mushrooms would, um, it would take some inspiration from uh, because it's the end of June. We're supposed to be like two and a half weeks into my chanterelle season. I'm falling apart at the seams, but nonetheless, at least I have something yellow and orange and fungusy. It is not a chanterelle, but it is 
is still delightful. Okay, so I want to talk about the name Russula flavida just a little bit. So this is one of the many gajillion mushrooms out there that, to my knowledge, does not have a common name. And so, uh, you know, if you're kind of new to mushrooming and you're starting to get to that place where you're like, I'm not just interested in the mushrooms I can eat or photograph, I'm interested in all of the mushrooms and I want to learn all of their names, you hit this wall almost immediately of like, well, you're going to have to learn some scientific names if you're interested in, in knowing what these mushrooms are known as. This is a great example. Like, I'm sure I could call it the, you know, uh, yellow, orange, southern brittle gill or something like that. And people might eventually adopt it. But at this point, it's like, okay, it's a, it's a Russula. And, uh, you know, the Latin name is also a really handy or contains a fairly handy memory device for me. So flavo in Latin means yellow. And so a lot of mushrooms that have flavo or flava or some variation thereof in their names are easier to remember because they're yellow. So you look at, uh, you know, for instance, you have uh, a Amanita flavoconia. That is a mushroom that has sort of uh, yellowy uh, uh, tissue at the base of the stem. Um, and it's also kind of powdery, but also is sort of reddish yellow on top. You have uh, Amanita flavorubens, so that is a blushing reddish uh, mushroom, but it has really beautiful yellow tones and tints to it. So oftentimes when you hear flavo or flava, that is, uh, you know, or you see a yellow mushroom, you start to look in that direction. And so, uh, you know, oftentimes if I am like really stumped and I'm sitting in front of my books and in front of Google and just trying to get my head around something and putting in like a description of what it looks like is not adequate to even get somewhere, I will start with that Latin word root. So I'm like, okay, I have a yellow mushroom. I know it's a Russula because I'm good enough at identifying to genus. So Russula and then uh, Flavo, and I got a couple of hits on that. And so, you know, that's one way to uh, sort of help with um, memory. And so frequently, you know, the Latin names do have color or texture references. So really, if you unpack all of that jargon, really what you have is a an amalgamation of Latin, Greek, and random other words that physically describe a common fruiting body. And this is a pretty pretty simple case of like, it is a really bright yellow Russula. And that's essentially all that scientific name is telling us. Uh, so, you know, I, I think it's really valuable to uh, learn, essentially, like if you're interested in that approach of learning uh, the scientific sort of prefixes and suffixes, you have descriptors. So things that uh, refer to striations or different like physical features, but then the color stuff, you want to look to Latin and you want to look to Greek. And so in the case of mushrooms, you have flavo flava, which is the uh, Latin root for yellow, but then you have uh, Greek as well is represented, of course, because it couldn't just be Latin or Greek. You have to have as many possible permutations uh, to make a scientific name as possible, because that's, I don't know, it's got to be fun to do that. But so uh, the um, Greek root xantho is a reference to yellow uh, in color. So probably the easiest um, mushroom to learn that will sort of bake that into your understanding is Agaricus xanthodermis. And so this is a uh, very common in some places. It's, I don't find it frequently here, but it, it, it grows in yards. It is a poisonous mushroom that is related to a portobello and also related in the same genus as a lot of really nice edible wild mushrooms. But uh, it's poisonous and it smells like chemicals, but it is xanthodermis because it stains radically yellow when you start to handle it. So xanthodermis simply means yellow skin. And so if you, um, unfortunately, you know, because it's mushroom land, uh, Agaricus xanthodermis is not the only Agaricus that stains yellow. However, if you're trying to learn that one, um, xanthodermis, that emerges from, again, the, the yellow uh, reaction, which is really quite uh, extreme. So, like, I say there are other Agaricus that stain yellow to one degree or another. Some of them are very strong stainers. Some of them are not. Um, if you find Agaricus xanthodermis, it does not smell like an appetizing mushroom. So if you were to pick it, you'd be like, oh man, that's like glue or chemicals or, I mean, it's just really unappetizing. But nonetheless, it's a toxic mushroom with the, um, you know, the Greek root associated with a sort of um, color-based identification. 
All right, so I've probably gone on long enough, but, uh, you know, Russula flavida, I'm not going to eat this mushroom. Um, I could if I wanted to. It is one of the Russulas that is, uh, you know, mild enough to do that with. But, uh, you know, there's just not enough here for me to really uh, do much with. So I'm going to leave it here and let it, uh, you know, become food for the bugs or a squirrel, perhaps. Uh, but before I do that, I'm going to do the thing. I, I adore the Russula genus entirely because they are brittle and because they're fun to take apart and throw at things and people. But uh, let me show you this. Uh, oh, oh, and one other thing on the physical description here that I think is valuable is um, a lot of Russulas are two-toned. So they're like white and whatever color they are. And oftentimes that color is red or purple. We have green ones. We have gray ones. Um, but, uh, you know, when you're looking at uh, a Russula very frequently, the stem is white. So there are a number of species that have like uh, the stem and the cap color are the same, but that isn't nearly as common as it being just cap, whatever color it is, and then gills and stem, sort of an ivory white, like really, really white. And so, uh, you know, Russula flavida having a yellow stem is, uh, is significant. One other thing that just occurred to me, actually, in the midst of, of talking about Agaricus xanthodermis, I have a mushroom in my yard that is called Russula cyanoxantha. And that is a mushroom that's sort of a um, purpley color. It's, it's uh, commonly called the charcoal burner. But one of the distinguishing features and why they call it the charcoal burner is, is it oftentimes takes the form of sort of this gray purpley thing that has a flash of sort of blondish yellow coloration right in the middle. I don't know this for certain. I now have to go and look it up and see if cyanoxantha, and that xantha is in reference to that flash of yellow. I suspect it is. Even if it's not, that's how I'm going to remember cyanoxantha from here on in. And that's the other thing is it's like, I occasionally will, because I'm not, you know, versed in Latin or Greek, sometimes my understandings are really tenuous, and sometimes the mnemonic devices I select have absolutely nothing to do with the scientific name, so I just kind of grab whatever associative juice there is and try to, uh, you know, jam that into my brain so that I have a better chance of retaining and recalling. And when I say uh, retaining, that's all relative. Like, honestly, during non-mushroom season, it's easy for your knowledge to, like a mushroom, decay quite rapidly. And then you come back to the season and it is a process of uh, you know, th basically pulling stuff out of deep storage and what have you, you know, whatever system of knowledge you can develop around that with, you know, your semantics and the way words are used and so forth can oftentimes make that kind of embarrassing relearning process a little bit less embarrassing, a little bit less painful. Uh, but I also think it's a fascinating sort of, um, you know, process of learning and relearning that is part of mycology. You have the down season, you have mushrooms that change names or uh, will be recategorized. So you have to understand them and view them in a totally different way. And so that constant process of, of learning and refining and grooming your knowledge is really, I think, one of the most rewarding parts of the hobby because I can never ever be truly right. Um, and that actually is kind of rewarding in a way because like being able to say with authority what a mushroom is is really satisfying. But knowledge that that might disintegrate as our collective knowledge expands or it doesn't rain for three weeks is just a reminder of the limits of the human brain understanding and all those fun things that are like the big thinky stuff that I like to do when I'm out in the woods by myself looking at mushrooms. Anyway, Russula flavida, lovely little fellow. Uh, I've talked about uh, him slash her. Well, okay, mushrooms are... I don't, <laughs> Mushrooms are ungendered, but, uh, or, well, uh, yeah, mushrooms can, we won't even talk about that, but, uh, at another time, I promise I will do a video about, uh, Schizophyllum commune, which is a mushroom that produces in excess of 20,000 genetically distinct spore types. So it essentially has 23,000 sexes that it can mate with itself. It's very weird. Very exciting. Uh, but anyway, I am going to conclude by breaking apart this Russell to show you just how brittle it is. Oh yeah, this one has not been eaten by bugs. So this just like, it will completely come apart in your hands. And when it's in good shape, when you snap that stem, it's like a piece of chalk. It's totally, uh, you know, consistent and brittle in the middle. And it even makes a sound. Uh, most mushrooms, when they make a sound for you, it's oftentimes a little bit of a smoosh. And so a snap is uh, a good identification feature for the Russell genus in general. Take care of yourselves. It's kind of a rough time. 
and I hope you're all well. And uh, I hope that it rains and we get to see some mushrooms soon.